This is the second part of solving wave equation using lax fredericks method. So we discussed about forward in time central nerve space last time. We showed that it's unconditionally unstable. Today we're going to use lax fredericks which is conditionally stable. All right, so we're going to discretize our three wave equations uh, using lax fredericks so this is equation for R, for S, and for U. Remember we had three variables in our unknown vector Y. So if you go back and look at wave equation, so we started by looking at R, S, and U, where R and S are given here. So that's why we have three different equations in there. But remember in lax fredericks we replace the nj term in forward time in central space by averaging the j and j plus the j plus one and j minus one so that's why in lax fredericks we have j plus one j minus one divided by two at time n all right so now we have three equations similar to lax fredericks for a direction equation now this time is for wave equation so remember we converted our wave equation to to an advection version advection equation all right, so alpha is del T V del X. So I think now everything is set up. We can go to MATLAB and implement this and see whether we still get those instabilities. Okay, so I'm gonna to switch to MATLAB and show you how that is going to be. So this is now Lax Fredericks implementation of wave equation. Now we're going to use reflective boundary conditions where if you recall by definition reflective means the first derivative of the variable u with respect to x at the two boundary points plus minus l and every time t is going to be zero. Alright, so I have 200 points along the, y, along the x, 600 along the time. These are pretty much like before I set v equal to 1 such that my alpha which is down here is going to be less than 1 to be conditionally stable. So up to here is pretty much like the upwind method. The only difference is right here where I implemented the lax fredericks Even the initial condition is the same. Alright, so in the lax fredericks remember we have two, two equations. One is the RNS and the other one is u. So this is the equation for u, which is at time n, x equal i equals n minus 1 i plus del t and then times everything at the previous time step. We call it y old. So this is exactly this equation. And then we have two more equations for r and s, where I lop them into the y. So my y has two elements in there. And this is the implementation of lax fredericks with the averaging term here and then central, central uh, difference in the space over here. Where right, boundary condition, I want to set the DUD x equals 0. If you remember, we can use backward. So here's the backward difference at the right boundary. So when I'm sitting at boundary point NPTS in x, I'm going to use NPTS minus 1 and NPTS minus 2. So th this is looking back from the right boundary. For the left boundary, we're going to use forward Euler, and that's why when you're sitting at point x equal 1, you're going to look at 2 and 3. So this is with, with the coefficients of 4 thirds and minus 1 third, if you remember. So these are basically forward and backward differences, uh, where we can use uh, them to set the first derivative of u equal to 0. So th 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 these are for u, what about y? Well, the boundary conditions only apply to u. They're not applied to y. So then uh, the, the last line here is going to be ready or make everything ready for the next time step. So every uh, all the current y is going to be old in the next time step. So I'm going to, re I'm going to reassign uh, y old at the last line of this loop. The rest of it is representation or plotting in x 
T space as well as the animation. So the rest is actually nothing different compared to uh, upwind method we saw last time. So let me run the code. So here's the wave. Initially we have one wave, but it's going to propagate in two, di two different directions because V is V can be plus minus. Remember our wave equation is V squared. So if I go back to the wave equation here, we have V squared. So V can be positive and negative when you do the advection equation. If you split into advection, advection, then you see that you have two traveling waves, one to the right and one to the left. Uh, so let me rerun that. Again, you see that alpha is less than one, so it has to be stable, and you don't see those oscillations anymore. So again, you see there's no numerical error, the method is completely stable, and then we have derivative equal to zero here. But the question is why the wave doesn't propagate back? That's because the limitation of the advection equation. So remember in the advection equation, the wave can only propagate one way. If it, go, if it goes to the right, it has to go always, always has to go to the right. And if it goes to the left, always has to go to the left. So it cannot change the direction at any point. And that's why when it gets reflected here, you don't see any reflection back into the domain because that's the property of the advection equation we used to discretize our wave equation. All right, so I'm going to change my alpha to something bigger than one and see what happens. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to increase my velocity to something bigger than one such that we get alpha also bigger than one. So here's alpha bigger than one and you see that numerical error kicks in. So the the CFL condition we did the derived before actually holds here. So we'll see it again one more time. Initially you get you know, a little bit of perturbation there and then the perturbation goes in time. So that's because the CFL condition. Alright. So let's go back here and look at the stability condition. Um, let's see. Well, actually, this is like a quick note on why you cannot model reflective boundary because, again, we're using upwind approach within the lax matrix. So we do lax matrix on each individual equation, but each individual in each individual equation is is an upwind, so the wave can only propagate one direction, and that's why DUDX cannot be applied. Let's see, I had another boundary condition, so this was reflecting. I have also absorbing boundary. So for absorbing boundary, you set the velocity, or I'm sorry, the displacement equal to zero. So that's easy fix. If you go back to your code, instead of having the derivative equal to zero, all we do basically, we do nothing. We just only go over every point except the first and the last. And that's why my x index goes from two to n minus one. I'm not going over the last two points because those are zero. And I set them zero initially in here. So if we set them initially here and we don't change them, they're going to stay zero. And that's what I did here. That's why we don't have any other implementation than just the differential, the differential equation. If I run the code here, so initially we have the wave. The two waves hit the two boundaries, but then because the the, the displacement here is zero, we're going to absorb the two waves and the boundaries. So you see that everything is absorbed and nothing gets reflected back. So watch it one more time. The two waves propagating left and right. You hit the boundary, velocity, uh, displacement is zero here, and then they're going to damp out. Alright, so that was the absorbing and Reflecting boundaries we'll talk about. So, this was Lax Frederick's method for wave equation. In the next video, I'm going to talk about a direct method which will directly discretize every term in the wave equation. And we'll see what the difference between the direct method 
in Black Spread Decks will be in the next video. So stay tuned and thanks a lot for watching.